Greetings, my fellow lovers of lore, and welcome to another Warhammer 40k lore episode. As you probably know already from the title and the thumbnail, I have returned as promised to my series about the Primarchs. And since this guy got the most votes from you guys, I will honor my word and cover him next. And by him, I mean the tragic and unhinged Conrad Kurz, aka the Night Haunter, unwanting master of the Night Lord's Legion. Just like I did with the Lion, I will make multiple episodes about him in the same Chronicle-esque manner. I should mention that, because a good chunk of his fate was tied to that of the Lion, I will not go into much detail over those periods and events, because I would just be repeating myself. AKA, go and watch my Lionel Johnson videos. This, in turn, will probably result in fewer episodes than I did for the Lion, but rest assured that I have looked over what lore is available and will do at least three videos on Kurz. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about the early years of the Night Haunter, shall we? According to the heretical handwritten chronicle of his life, entitled simply The Dark, the Primarch Conrad Kerr's earliest memory was of descending from the heavens, in a crackling ball of light, to the night-shrouded planet of Nostramo. His embryonic form's gestation capsule, cruelly ripped through the warp from distant Terra by the machinations of the Chaos Gods, impacted on the dense cityscape of the planet's largest hive city of Nostromo Quintus, smashing through countless levels of urban debris and moldering architecture through the planet's crust and into its geosphere, before finally coming to a halt near the highly unstable liquid core of the planet. His descent left a scar in the virtually unviolable adamantium strata of Nostromo, the result of the supernaturally resilient Primarch's violent birth into a world that knew no light. The cratered pit his descent had carved into the planet was closed over and later regarded with fear and suspicion. Theoretically, the only way the Primarch could have reached the surface was to have swum through molten metal, or had his gestation capsule borne upwards through volcanic vents to the surface. Nostromo was a human-settled world that circled a dying sun whose light now barely reached the world, thus leaving it trapped in perpetual darkness. The crust of Nostromo bore high quantities of the strategic mineral known as adamantium, which provided the basis of the planet's immense mining and refining industry and supported the economies of its large hive cities. The vast majority of the planet's population lived in abject poverty, toiling in the mines while the rich grew richer, exploiting the already downtrodden workers. Sounds kind of like our world. Crime ran mostly unchecked, clinical depression was inescapable because of the constant darkness, and overpopulation was kept in check by suicide more than any other measure. Unlike many of the other Primarchs, Conrad Kurz was not taken in by any family and was left to raise himself in the vast underhive of Nostromo Quintus. He spent his early years surviving off his wits and determination, feeding himself by hunting the feral animals that roamed through the vast hive city. He was continually plagued by visions of the darkest possible future, horrifyingly potent waking dreams that would be a curse for him throughout his life. Uniquely among all the Primarchs, Kurz grew up completely alone, surviving only thanks to his wits, ruthlessness, and courage as a feral child in the underhives of Nostromo Quintus. That kinda makes you wonder if things wouldn't have turned out differently if only he would have had a friend to give him a hug now and then. As a lone young boy, feral and wary, Kurz shivered in the shadows of broken buildings and the top roofs, living as a scavenger and slaying any who sought to prey upon him. For even as an infant, he was possessed by frightful strength and an indefatigable will, married to a superhuman and watchful intelligence. The cries of people pleading under the torturer's knife were his cradle songs, and when he slept, he would dream of wars waiting in the stars. 
the dead heaped on worlds he had never seen, and he would wake with the screams of the dying in his ears and find out they were real. Even in the dark, isolated and silent, he was more nightmare than demigod. He killed to survive, and discovered that he was not like those he killed. They were weak and slow by comparison, and fell easily to his hands and fists and teeth. He ate the flesh of vermin to survive, and when that was not enough, he ate the dead. In his cauldron of sin, he learned, his mind taking the whispers of thoughts from the flesh he ate, leeching speech, and the arts of murder from those he watched. If you watched my Astartes organ implants videos, you'll remember that almost all Astartes can do this, as there is one particular organ that allows them to access a dead enemy's memory if they taste his DNA. He soaked up all the darkness could teach him, assimilating it as only the mind of a transhuman Primarch could. But the product of his savage tutelage was not a simple murderer or beast. Perhaps something of the Emperor's greater purpose whispered to Kurz. He could have become like the rest of Nostromo, a killer and a criminal. Given his nature, who can doubt that he would have risen to be the corrupt king of all he surveyed? But strangely, he did not. Instead, the boy who had grown up among the vermin and the flesh of the dead chose to change the world by bringing it justice. He began by killing those who crossed his path. Sin had surrounded him since he had first drawn breath. There was no need to seek them out. Murderers and street thugs began to mysteriously vanish, then whole gangs. Bodies appeared, mutilated and crucified on the walls of buildings. Flayed sheets of skin hung from bridges, and severed heads grinned from railings. A name began to follow his deeds, a name that he heard the people of his world whisper, half in fear and half in hope. The Night Hunter was the fearful name they gave him. An avenging spirit, an angel of blind justice, a murderer that other murderers feared. They began to hunt him, the gangs, the nobles enforcers, and the crime collectives alike, and this actually kept him entertained, for if nothing else, it brought the prey to him. He killed most who came after him, and let a few live to carry his message back to Nostromo's nefarious courts and princes. Without eyes, without hands, but with their tongues intact, the mutilated messengers would weep out a single message. I am coming for you. The Night Hunter followed the whispers, the rumors and the truths taken from the mouths of flayed gangers. His vigilante actions began small, intervening when he witnessed something he believed to be wrong, but rapidly escalating into hunting down those he believed had committed transgression. At first, several people prominent within Nostromo Quintus's corrupt civic hierarchy disappeared. Leaders of the most vocal opposition to the status quo vanished in similar circumstances. Bodies of known criminals began to appear, gutted like fish by some unholy assailant. Corrupt officials were found hung from high windows. Body parts blocked stormwater drains. Many of the corpses found were so horribly beaten and maimed by their assailant that identification was impossible. Within the year, the crime rate of Nostromo Quintus fell to nearly zero. He killed and mutilated until the streets fell quiet, and his name was no longer a prayer for justice, but a plea of the fearful. An entire world had been cowed by sheer terror. When the cities slept in silence, and the sound of gunfire was a rare murmur, he went before the aristocracy of sin and gave them a choice kneel and follow his law, or be destroyed. Some never left that first council. The rest knelt before their new master. Nostromo belonged to the Night Haunter. He would be their first king, their so-called Dark King. Night Haunter became the first monarch of Nostromo Quintus, absorbing accumulated knowledge with a diligence almost akin to greed. He ruled with temperance and reason unheard of until word came to him that some injustice had been done, 
whereupon he alone would hunt the offender through the Hive City's empty streets until exhaustion forced his quarry to collapse. He would then proceed to mutilate his prey, although not entirely beyond recognition. This unpredictable pattern of benevolent wisdom and hideous vengeance ushered the shocked Nostroman populace into new realms of efficiency and honesty. Exports of adamantium to their neighboring worlds have tripled. Nostroman society came to exist in a horrible balance maintained by shared wealth and shared fear. None dared to have more than his neighbor, and under the shadow of the Night Hunter's rule, the city grew well lit and prosperous. And as Nostromo Quintus led the way, the rest of the planet's population followed, anxious to keep the Night Hunter away from their door. After a few decades, he no longer had to hunt, as the passing years had stolen the need. Curse's city had become a silent hive illuminated by the light of progress. No crime, no sin had been committed in decades. The last vestiges of anarchy and resistance had died out soon after he began to broadcast his mutilations across the city via picture interfaces available in every home, transmitting his victims screaming over the planetary communication network. So, as you can see, it kinda did make sense for the criminals to stop, since they were too busy watching the How to Mutilate Your Neighbors with Papa Kurz show every evening. Those executions, recorded in his throne room, ended what little crime remained. His people knew their transhuman ruler would take to the streets in vengeance at the slightest provocation. So, be afraid, litterers and jaywalkers, be very afraid. In their fear, the last souls holding out finally accepted the salvation he offered. Nostromo continued to trade its abundance of adamantium with the worlds in neighboring star systems, which they had done for generations. Though under the Night Hunter's kingship, all planetary exports rose to unparalleled levels, as did the profits of such endeavor. The city's foundries and forge fires burned hotter, the refineries and processing plants spread across the urban sprawl, and the mines clawed ever deeper into Nostromo's priceless crust. Kurz foresaw the coming of his father, the emperor of mankind, for he knew all things. The answers came to him as they always did, in his dreams. Now master of his world, he found his transhuman senses sharpening beyond anything he had ever imagined possible. He knew on some voiceless level he was becoming something, ripening, maturing into whatever he was born to be. The Emperor had watched the way that Nostromo worked from his divine auguries. The citizens were clean and efficient, working towards a common goal with determination and silence. The night-shrouded streets were completely empty as the entire planet slept. Though they lived in ignorance of the glory of the Imperium, the Dark King undoubtedly possessed great authority and was able to command unquestioning respect, aka dread and fear. He had molded his society into a model of governance, matchless productivity, natural conformity, and total obedience. To be continued. And this, my shadowy friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Night Hunter's early years. Future episodes in this miniseries will deal with the coming of the Emperor, Kurz's participation in the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy, the destruction of Nostromo, and of course, spoilers, his death. Do you agree with his methods of bringing order to the home world, or would you have done something different? Let me know in the comments below, as well as any other questions or thoughts you may have. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to click the like button and subscribe for more videos. And if you'd like to help me and my channel out, go check my Patreon page, the link is in the video description. I thank you very much for watching, and we'll definitely see you next time. The Emperor Protects.